Hello everyone, I have so much to share with you about the Dior collection, so I want to get started right away with the nail polishes. And on my index finger here, I have Dior's Bikini. And this is a very red-orange coral, probably the most orange of the coral nail polishes that I own. On the rest of my fingers, I'm actually wearing Chanel Distraction, which was released earlier this year with their new blushes. But between the two, I don't know if the difference will be very noticeable on camera. So I put together this color swatch for you here. And this is Dior Bikini, and the closest color to that is actually Laura Mercier's Cabana. Over here I have another orange, but this is a very metallic color. This is called OPI Melon of Troy, and it's actually the closest in base shade, but the finishes are completely different. Bikini is a cream, while this OPI shade is again a metallic. As you can see, even in the slightly blue lighting, this is reading more orange, while this Cabana reads more pink. So if you already have Cabana, Dior Bikini is not a must-have. Because Chanel Distraction has pink micro shimmers in the formula, it's different enough that if you have Chanel Distraction, Dior Bikini, because of its great formula, is still worth splurging on because it's not too red. The problem with a lot of orange corals is that they either lean really orange or really red. But Dior Bikini strikes a really nice balance, so that's why I do still recommend it. The other nail polish shade from this collection is Dior Saint Tropez, and it's reading slightly more green on camera right now, but in person, it's more of a Robin's Egg Tiffany Blue. I think both of these nail polishes are gorgeous and they coordinate well with the two eyeshadow quads that were released. There is a blue eyeshadow quad and an orange warm eyeshadow quad and that's the look that I'll be doing today. As much as I liked the blue eyeshadow quad when I saw it, I knew I really wouldn't reach for it because the blues were very pastel and light and they contrasted a little too much against my skin tone. So I passed on that. But since we're on the subject of the eyeshadow quad, I'll go ahead and show you the one that I purchased. This one is called Aurora. And it is a beautiful sunset tone, warm eyeshadow quad. I know the primary issue that a lot of consumers have with Dior eyeshadow quints is that they tend to be a little too frosty in finish. Well, needless to say, Dior has knocked it out of the park with Aurora because it is not frosty at all. Well, at least in comparison to their standard shimmery eyeshadows. The brown here is more of a semi-matte, whereas the coral is slightly sateen. This is the only actually slightly frosty color. The light pink has a little bit of glitter to it, and the gold is actually a really beautiful shimmery finish, sort of like a Velux Pearl from MAC. But before we get into the lip products, I did want to talk about the bronze because I get asked questions about these the most. This is last summer's bronzer, and this one is actually called Aurora. And this one over here, the new one, is the Dior Skin Nude Tan. And these are mineral bronzer. And this is the lighter of the two. I know it's number two sunlight, but this is actually the lighter of the two options available. The other one is super dark, but I love this bronzer because you can use it all over the face. And even though it's slightly corally here, it doesn't look too pink against my yellow toned skin. Obviously I look really bronzed because I bronzed up quite a bit. I just really wanted to highlight the beautiful effect of the bronzer. And at first I didn't think this bronzer was that great. For the price, I do think Dior bronzers are just as good as Guerlain's. Guerlain is very famous for their bronzer. I love their terracotta line, but I highly recommend this if your skin can tolerate mineral makeup. So overall, I do really love this bronzer. I also love the canage packaging on the metal. I think it's really nice. It's definitely a lot easier to travel with than the standard Dior square rectangle packaging. This is the Aurora packaging from last year. And Aurora, in fact, is actually darker and though it looks nicer in the pan it is much more shimmery on my face I'll swatch them for you here as much as I love both I think Aurora looks much better on me when I am darker and for those of you who missed Aurora Aurora was also the lighter version but as you can see on the back of my hand it's significantly darker than the nude tan and now finally for the lips, Dior released three gorgeous lip colors and lip glosses for this season. They are in the Addict formula and the one that I purchased is number 414. 
and it is a golden shade. This is definitely not one that I would generally pick, but my best friend Tammy was with me and she actually felt that this was the most unique color out of the three lipsticks. There was an orange that's not as bright as fire, which I should actually show you. There's a, a medium pink, which is actually pretty similar to a D Dior Extreme lipstick that I have, but let me swatch this one for you. As you can see, it's pretty nude, but it has that definite brown lean. Here it is right here, and it has gorgeous golden shimmer. And now for the pink. This one is actually called Saint Tropez, which is the same name as the blue nail polish. As you can see, Dior likes to recycle the names, Saint Tropez, Aurora, etc. Anyway, this is the extreme lipstick. This is not a standard addict, but this is actually pretty similar in color to the pink addict that was launched with this summer collection. So if you have Saint Tropez in the extreme formula, then you can definitely skip the pink from this collection. Now, this is the orange lipstick from last summer, and this one is again called Fire. This one is actually much brighter and more of a red orange. I think the summer 2012 version is much more wearable and toned down. In fact, I like that one a lot more, but I really wear truly orange lip color to begin with, so that's why I passed and bought the brown instead. I feel like it gives more of an overall bronzed finish that, or bronze goddess look that Estee Lauder always promotes during the summer. I really do like it, and I think it's a great departure from Dior's usual bright summer campaign. And last but not least for the glosses, this is the gloss from the summer. It's 464 and it's a gorgeous warm yellow based pink with tons of gold shimmer. It's a very fluid formula, but unfortunately the addict glosses don't last that long. They wear for about an hour or two and then you have to reapply, but they are moisturizing. They don't make my lips peel. It's just the wear time is a little short for me as all. Well. The gloss is probably the most generic product of the collection and the one that I would pass on and not recommend. So I hope this quick review was helpful. I do apologize for the change in scenery, but before we get started with the tutorial, I did want to talk about the new waterproof eyeliner for this collection. And it's a gorgeous turquoise blue, as you could see here on this swatch. And first, let me just say that if you have tried the older version of this Dior Show waterproof liner, this new one is no longer the same. It has been reformulated, so it's softer, it's creamier. It's definitely an improvement upon the old one. I have the original version of this pencil in black, and I have to admit that it was slightly too dry. And generally, I don't say that because I love dry pencils since they tend to last longer on my waterline, but that one was just simply too dry and my contacts felt like they were very irritated because the formula would clump a little bit. This one is much smoother. It has a twist up top and it has a sharpener in the back. And that is a wrap for the review. I hope you guys found it helpful even though I was a little long-winded this time around. There's just so many products and so many similar things. I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew um, and could look through and shop through your own collection to make sure you didn't have repeats or doubles or, you know, just to make sure your purchases are well informed. Now, without any further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. So to start off, I've already applied my Dior Skin Foundation in 031. This is a bit dark for me at the moment, but it's the current Dior Forever Foundation. So I just went ahead and used that. Now I'm going to fill in my brows with my Shiseido Natural Brow Pencil, the one that I always use. Now I'm going to prime my eyes with a bit of NARS Pro Prime. Now I'm going to take a flat shader brush and dipping it into the gold eyeshadow, pick up a very good amount and pack it on to the inner corner here, getting around that tear duct, slightly past the crease. Now I'm going to take one of the eyeshadow applicators and dip it into the orange copper. I'm going to place it in the center of the lid, taking it slightly past the crease again, just lightly blending it into the gold. And flipping the applicator over to the pointy end, I'm going to generously dip it into the brown here. You want to cover the entire applicator because we're going to use it to create a slant. Take it and pull directly in. This way you create a nice straight line and you don't have as much to clean 
and looking directly into a mirror, blend up so that your crease line matches and blends evenly in. I'm also going to pull the eyeshadow out into a slight cat eye. Now lifting the eye up, just go ahead and blend that orange and brown together. Just to create a nice smooth transition. I'm going to take my flat shader brush again and without using any more product, just blend all the colors together with the edge of the brush. Now I'm going to dip back into the brown with a smaller applicator and I'm just going to tidy up the brown, adding a little bit more to the lower lid to darken it up. And then I'm going to connect that outer wing of shadow and bring it straight down to the lower lash line, blending it in with the gold we already placed. Then one last time with the orange, go back and add a little bit more to the lid and up the crease just so that you could see the color when you look down as well as when you're looking up. This is the focal point of color to the eye. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the pink using a separate small tipped applicator and I'm just going to add this right in the inner corner where the gold is not completely overlapping the color at the lower lash line, but just underneath it and then around the top. This is just for balance. You don't have to do it, but I did want to incorporate the pink in a very subtle way into this look, and this is how I chose to do it. And last but not least, I'm going to take this angled brush and dip it into the ivory here, and I'm going to place that right along the brow bone. And I'm going to blend it into the top of the eyeshadow bringing it down and just blend, blend, blend. Now I'm going to take a shimmery brown eyeliner. This is the Artliner Waterproof from last season, but it is a gorgeous shimmery brown, but any one you have will do. Sorry, that's Tucker meowing in the background. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to wing it out, but you don't have to. Now that the falsies are on, I'm just going to explain a bit why I did in tight line. Instead, I chose to frame the eyes with two coats of mascara on the bottom lashes instead of closing off the eye by lining that pink skin, that waterline. It makes your eyes look smaller, but if you frame the eyes with two coats of mascara on your lower lashes, it gives a more wide awake look, which you kind of need when you're using a warmer eyeshadow color like orange on your lid. I'm going to take the new Sunlight Bronzer and using a large fluffy brush, I'm going to dip all the way into the bronzer in a circular motion to pick up all of the color. Then I'm just going to place it on the apples of my cheeks and start in a three-shaped motion down the jawline and place a little bit on my neck as well to even out the color. I'm going to run some down the sides of my nose as well to give it a more contoured look. Makes your nose look taller and slimmer. And then I'm going to take a smaller, more precise brush like this Duo Fiber one here and sweep it right across just the end. And the, these are the coral bits. And these parts right here, the N and the E, are more shimmery than the U and the D as you can see. So this way it works more like a blush and I'm just going to place it on top of that bronzer that we just placed. This way you don't have to use a separate highlighter or blush, you just use the bronzer for this one entire effect on your complexion. I know some people might be concerned because there are shimmer bits in this, but the shimmer doesn't really fall all the way down the face. It really does stay put. And while it is similar to Aurora, I feel like this one is better for day use because it's not as dark. And last but not least for the lips, I know not everyone's going to like this color combination, but I felt like it was a good representation of the collection. I know some probably wanted to see orange on the lips as well as on the eyes, but on me, it's a little bit overkill, especially with the bronzer, so I'm going to use the casual gold. This is like a nice nudie with gold shimmer lipstick, so it looks very natural. I think this is definitely a great beach shade. 
obviously it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea because it does lean more brown than nude but I really do like it I think it's very unique and I think Dior did a great job of releasing a color like this it's something slightly more of a departure from the rest of the line now for the gloss this is the only pink that's part of this collection And this just gives my lips a slightly more pink tinge just to even out the nude brownness of the look. But I really do like the finish and let me just zoom out so you guys can see. And as much as I don't think the gloss is anything special, I do really love this collection. And in fact, out of all the summer collections that I've seen thus far, I think Dior really did a great job. I'm not sure if it's going to be my favorite just yet, but I really am loving the bronzer and the eyeshadow quad and I highly recommend both. I think this Dior collection was a great way to kick off the summer collection review videos on my YouTube channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed producing this video for you. Hope you found it helpful and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.